I'm also very thankful for one that uh, y'all are crazy enough to let me get up here and do this. Uh, but two, that we have a uh, praise and worship team that don't just every week decide, well, we're going to sing this song, we're going to sing this song, we're going to sing this song. We have a group of people that, I mean, I, I've, never got, I've never got to come to none of their practices or, or, or have ever been here when they practice, but I do know this, that before every service they go and they lock themselves in that room right there, they join hands and they begin to pray and they begin to listen to the Spirit of God. And I'll say this, uh, probably four out of five times when I get up to speak, they, they, they sing my message before I get up here, you know, and, and, and for one, that makes me, that gives me encouragement to get up here and speak the word that, that the Lord has laid upon my heart, but two, I mean, that is so important for them to be able to come up here because the, this is what the word says. The word says that the Lord inhabits his people's praise. So if we don't have a, if we don't get, if they don't get up here and actually lead us into a place of praise and a place of worship, to lead us into his presence, then I can get up here and I can have a good word and I can spit all over the front row, hoop and holler and run around the church. But if his presence isn't here, then it, it, it's all going to be in vain, right? It's, it, it's, it's all going to be for naught. You know, we, I, I want to I stay in the presence of God. I want to I, I I be able to say at the end of my life, like uh, Dr. Bob Lemon, Dr. Bob Lemon said, said this, he said, I have been a part of every major move of God since I have walked into the ministry. And I mean, that, that is fulfillment to me. That's the, that's the same as Apostle Paul looking at Timothy or writing a note to Timothy and saying, I have ran the race. I have completed the task at hand. I have done everything that the Lord has called me to do, and I feel like that I am complete in that. I want to be able to say that at the end of my days. I want to be able to say that I have been a part of every major move of God. But this is the only way that I'm going to be able to do that is if I keep my mind and my heart open. Because Dr. Bob also said things like this, that he didn't like it when crazy guys like me begin to punch holes in their heads and wear earrings. He didn't like it when, when and uh, he didn't like it when the new clothes fads would come along. He, he didn't like some of these different, I mean, because that's human nature, right? I mean, that's, that, that's just the way that we are. That, that, that's, that, that, that's a part of who we are. We don't like change. And when something different comes along, we automatically want to kick that thing to the curb or at least say, man, I know for a fact that is not of God. That's not of God. Because, you know, well, I've never seen anybody else do that. Well, is, before we say it's not of God, let's get in the Scripture and find out what the Word says about these things. So let's do that. Let's go to Ephesians 4. I've been stuck in this chapter for about my last... Uh, Three, three sermons, uh, I could probably grab the, those three words and just put them back to back and preach to y'all for about three hours this morning if you want me to do that. But uh, uh, Bring it on. I, I've got one in agreement. There's 15 others saying, I've got a pot roast and you are not doing that. You know. <laughs> Glory to God. Ephesians 4, I'm going to start in verse 17. If I can get there myself. Verse 17, it says, This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord, that ye henceforth walk worthy. Or, I'm sorry. Henceforth walk not as the gen I'm in another scripture there. Walk worthy of your calling. You know that one? Henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind, having their understanding darkened. Can you turn my mic down just a little bit, please? having their understanding darkened and being alienated from the life of God to the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart, who being past feeling have given themselves over unto lasciviousness, to the work of uncleanliness, with greediness, but you have not so learned Christ. So if you have heard him and have been taught by him, as the truth is in him or in Jesus, that you put off concerning the former conversation of the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lusts and the renewed spirit of your mind, 
that you put on the new man, which after God is created righteousness and true holiness, wherefore putting away lying, speaking with speaking every man truth with his neighbor. And for we are members of one another. So be ye angry and not sin. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath, neither give place for the devil. And let him who steal, steal no more, but rather let him labor, working with his hands the things which are good, that he may have to give to him who needs. And let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good, use the edifying, the minister's grace unto the healers, or the hearers. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you are sealed unto the day of redemption. And let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. Well, Lord, I praise you. And I thank you, Father, for the words you've laid upon my heart this morning, Lord God. And I pray somehow, some way that I can convey this message. Lord, to the hearers this morning in a way that they would be able to understand, Father God. I want this seed to be planted deep within their heart, land on good soil, Father God, that it might grow roots, Father God, and and, and grow up and have fruit and fruit that remains, Father. So, Lord, I praise you, and I thank you, Father God, that the people that I am speaking to this morning, that they are that type of soil, Father God. So, Lord, I give you glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. I was telling my brother Levi before service that uh, the Lord really began to, to, to speak to me about this and about uh, 400 other things. When we went bowing last night, we was on the way over there, my wife, Jocelyn, she's like, what are you talking about tomorrow? I was like, I don't know. We get done bowing, you know, it's about 8 o'clock. Jonathan, my brother Jonathan back here on the camera, he's, we're walking out and he's like, what are you talking about tomorrow? And I'm like, I don't know. You know, I don't know, I don't know. Because I told him, I said, it could be about one of 800 things. And then as, as I go, uh, we, me and Deander and Jocelyn get in the car, and I told him, I said, I'm going to go home. I said, you can take Deander on home. You can go get the kids. I said, I'm going to go home and just start to write some things down. I said, because I've got to get something settled in my spirit for tomorrow morning. And I just begin to, to pray in the spirit and ask the Lord what direction he wanted me to go this morning, what the word of the Lord was for, for this group of people that was coming into the house. And he really began to speak to me about this, about about renewing our minds and breaking some mindsets. And, and as, as he began to speak to me about this, I was telling my brother Levi, I said, uh, I, I began to think, I know I talked about breaking mindsets before. And of course, I've got, I've got every sermon that I've ever spoke in, 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 a, in a folder or in tablets somewhere. You know, and I began to dig through it, and I found it, and I told Levi, I said, that was the most religious word that I have ever probably spoke in my life and I was like there is no way that I'm using any of that (laughs) you know because the fact of the matter is is when we think about breaking mindsets we usually start thinking about some of the old things you know I mean even the word right here says concerning the old man putting off the old man but the fact of the matter is is uh, my old man and Bob's old man may be really, really fall apart. Or my old man and, and Melanie's old lady <laughs> may, may be really far apart. Saying this, that my sin issues and Pastor Chip's sin issues or, or the things that he struggles with and the things that I struggle with are going to be two totally different things. And it's going to be really unfair to me or to him either way that if I try to take the things that convict me and begin to try to convict him with them. You know, if I try to make Pastor Chip walk a line that, that Brock's walking, I'm going to, man, I'm going I'm I'm to make him trip. I'm going to make him stumble because what I found out is I tried to walk this at one point in my life as I begin to look at Pastor Chip and as I begin to look at Pastor Dan and because of the, the honor that, that I bestowed upon him and I thought how great of men I saw in them. I mean, I, I, I really probably put a whole lot more on these men than what I probably should have at one point in my life. Because, they were, I mean, they were just awesome to me. They were great to me. And, and don't get me wrong, there's nothing wrong. Apostle Paul even said that we have to have heroes or fathers. I mean, we've got to have those men in our life. I mean, because if I didn't have these men in my life, if I didn't have these heroes that were in my life, there's no way that I would have made it to where I am today. 
Because there were so many times when I would go to Pastor Chip's house with tears in my eyes, saying that I think I, I, think I prophesied of a, of a demon. I think, that, I think I gave somebody a word that was not right, you know, and, and he, would, he would help me work through these things. I remember calling Pastor Dan, I don't know how many times when I used to work out of town, and I'd call him and I'd say, I just want to hear God the way that you hear God. I, w- I want to be able to, to see the things that you see. I want, I want to be able to do the things that you do. And they would think, Brock, just calm yourself. One step at a time, from faith to faith, from glory to glory, all these things. Believe me, son, they're going to come. They're going to be there one of these days. You're not going to make it overnight. You're not going to wake up one morning and be like, oh, I have grown into my anointing and I am walking in the stature of Christ, you know. It, It just doesn't happen that way. But I thank God for the heroes in my life. I thank God for the, for the men and the women that he has placed in my life that gives me a little bit of direction. And I, and I promise you, there was not one time ever that Pastor Chip has ever looked at me or, or, or Pastor Dan has ever looked at me and says, you've got to do it the way that I do it. You know, if you're going, if you're going to get it, now, they, now don't get me wrong, they've given me some, some indicators. They've given me some, some keys some things that, that, hey, you might want to try this or you may want to try this, and if it, if it works out for you, that's great, and if it don't, that, that, that's fine too. But never once have they ever looked at me and said, you have to do it this way. I mean, I've got some, some sons and daughters in the Spirit. If you, if you call yourself one of those, raise your hand. Amen. How, how many times have I ever looked at you and said, you've got to do it the way that I do it? Have I ever done that to you, Audrey? I have never looked at him and said, if you don't do it this way, it will not work. And if I ever tell you that, you run, honey. Okay, you run, you get away from me as fast as you can because I have went down a road that is not right. Okay, because the fact is, is the, 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 the word tells us that the word itself is unto no one man's interpretation. That means this, that, that Jocelyn may get a revelation because Pastor Chip will tell you this, that the word is like a many-faceted stone. Every time you turn it, I mean, you may, me and him may be looking at the same scripture, and he's going to get a revelation, and I'm going to give a re- revelation, because the word is like a many-faceted stone. As you turn that stone, it's something a little bit different. And as you turn it, it's something a little bit different. But it's the same scripture that we read over and over again. How many times have you read a scripture 200 times, and then one day you read it, and you're like, wow. And it, it, it wasn't like that. That, wow, on that same scripture hadn't come to me five other times. On the same scripture. It's because God is, it, the word is life, it says. The word is alive. It is, it is a living and breathing entity in my life. That it, it, it brings me to places that only the word can and only Christ can. But if I take that same revelation and I set that same revelation upon face lap and I say this is the way that it is. This is the way that it's always going to be, and this is the way that you're going to have to walk it out. And if you don't walk it out like that, I promise you, you'll never get where I'm at. It's not going to happen. You're not going to make it. Then I have just took a revelation that God has given me, and I twisted it up and put it in a pretty little bow that is now be called law, and I stuck it on the, on the shoulder of my sister because this is what I know. Within the, within the last year, I have just now really begun to learn how to walk in some liberty, walk, walk, in, walk in some freedom. You know, the, I mean, the word tells me this, that there's only a couple laws that I'm under. There's only a couple laws that I'm under. And one of them is the law of liberty. And one of them is the law of love. And the reason that I am walking under the law of liberty and the law of love, because I am free to love. I gotta walk in a place of liberty and freedom where I am free to love. And believe me, the, the word also says, says this that those have, who have been forgiven much, those are the ones who, lo- who, who loves much. And listen, guys, if anybody could have ever thrown a monkey wrench in the works of God or walking out the life of God, it would be me. Because I was jacked up, I was messed up. When I come under the Lord, listen to me. I, I was, the reason I have no hair right now is because it was 14 different collars when I came to God. Okay, I, I, I completely killed my hair by dying it so much. One of the guys I ran around with, he called me Peacock. <laughs> he did. He called me Peacock because I had so many different colors of hair. 
And listen, my old man hated it, didn't you, Dad? You did not like it. You did not like the, the, all the different clothes that we wear. Every generation, listen to me, every generation hates the new fads that their kids are wearing, right? And every generation hates the haircuts that the kids have. I remember my dad saying, looks like you stuck a bowl on top of your head and shaved around it. Well, that's pretty much what we did. I mean, it was, a, it was a bowl cut. That's what it was called, you know? And now I look at, I, I tell Grant all the time, I was like, your hair's so dumb. You know, I don't, I don't like your hair. You know, I, call, I call it the toupee haircut, you know? They, they shave all this and they got the... On, on the side there, and I, I just don't like it. But every generation gripes about all these same things. And you're going to find out that, you know, when, when, when my kids get a little bit older and they start wearing some of the clothes that, that whatever comes into style then, I'm probably not going to like that either. But I cannot look at them and tell them, take that junk off and go put some real clothes on. Unless, of course, it's inappropriate. I mean, there, there, there's some lines. There's, we've got to keep balance in all this. I mean, got to, got to use a little bit of common sense. But I remember when me and Jocelyn, had, uh, it was probably about two years into our marriage. And of course, I just told you, you know, this is, this is coming from Peacock. Okay. We walk into Kmart, and this young man walks in. And as he walks in, he's, he's got one of them 14-foot-tall uh, Mohawks, you ever, you ever seen one? I mean, the, the punk rock mohawk, you know? And it's blue with the uh, pink ends on the end of it. And he's got, a, he's got, of course, at this time I had, you know, uh, uh, taken my earrings out because that wasn't godly and I'd, I'd done all these different things because I knew that wasn't godly. And I had, you know, I'd walked all these, all, all these rules and regulations that I, that I thought I needed to be walking in. And this young man walks in and I thought, what a freak. As he walked, and right when, I mean, I literally said it out loud. Of course, I mean, I, I wasn't saying it to him. Don't get me wrong. He was uh, away from me. But right when I said that, it was like a, it was a punch in the gut. And no, I'm not saying the Holy Ghost punches you in the gut. But what I am saying is the conviction of God hit me. And I literally felt it in my stomach. And I was like, oh, Lord, forgive me. You know, when right there in Kmart, I begin, to, I begin to well up with tears because it wasn't, but six years before that, that, that was me. And I begin to, oh, I begin to repent and cry right there in the middle of Kmart and say, Lord, please forgive me. And I think that the scripture that says this, that the, a man who looks at himself in a mirror and then walks away forgetting what type of man that he was. I think that that comes from a lot of the rules and a lot of the regulation, a lot of these religious systems that listen to me. My fathers did not put that on me. I just told you that in the beginning of this word. My fathers did not put that on me. They did not teach me that way. Again, not once did they ever give me a set of rules that I had to follow. But for some reason, these things want to clip themselves onto you, attach themselves to you, so that you can pack it around so that hopefully you might teach it to somebody else. It's a natural occurrence. It's something that happens naturally. You want me to show it in, in the garden? Adam and Eve, it says that they got to walk with God every single day in the cool of the day, and they had fellowship with God, and they knew God. But for some reason, when Adam and Eve fell, there creates this gap between them and the Lord, and they run and they hide. That's why I'm saying it's a natural occurrence, because the first thing that God says is he walks out into the garden, he begins to holler for him, he begins to call out for him, Adam, Eve, where are you? And finally, Adam works up enough courage within himself to, to bring himself out of the bushes and say, well, Lord, we were hiding, because... We were naked and we were ashamed. And God looks at him and says, who told you that you were naked? Who told you that? In other words, Adam, I don't see you any differently now than what I have ever seen you. You're no different now than what you were. I've heard people preach about how sin creates this gap between you and God that is, I can't find it in Scripture. I can't find it in Scripture. 
Matter of fact, it says this. I mean, if, if that's the case, if sin cannot sit in the presence of God, if it creates this gap between me and God, now listen to me, I am not giving you permission. You hear me? Apostle Paul says this, yes, grace abounds, but God forbid that you go out and sin so that you might obtain grace. I am not saying that at all this morning. Disclaimer, 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 that I, that I hate that I have to throw those out there, but I'm going to anyway. I am not saying that. But the fact of the matter is, is if sin creates a gap between me and God, then why is it that Jesus sat with the tax collectors? Why is it that Jesus sat with the wine bibbers? Why is it that they called Jesus himself a wine bibber? It's because he hung out with the wine bibbers. The word of God says this, that the son of man came eating and drinking and that you looked at him and you said he sat with tax collectors and he sat with sinners and you gave him no honor. It's because that, that, that imaginary gap, the only place that gap exists is in here. The only place that gap exists when I mess up is within my mind. The same thing when, when Dr. Baba said the only way that I am limited in the works of God, the only way that I am limited in the anointing of God that he has given me is right here. Pastor Dan's going to say something like this. He says, I, I, it's six inches from the place from my heart to my head. If I could get rid of that six inches sometimes, I think I could walk in more power. I think I could walk in more liberty. I think I could walk in more peace. I think I could walk in more strength. It's that six inches from my heart to my mind. That's why the word says this, I have to have my mind renewed. Because the fact is, is the mind is a very powerful thing. The mind is a very powerful thing. I got a little illustration. Levi and Jocelyn, Pastor Chip's going to remember this. I've done this illustration uh, one other time. If you guys could come up here, I'll, I'll, just, I'll just use my hat with Levi. This is a, this was something that they taught us in, in mixed martial arts. You guys can just stand right here, face one another. This is something that they taught us in mixed martial arts. Levi, just put your arm out like this. Punch Jocelyn in the face. Step back, baby. You're going. I'm a little bit. What I, want, what I want you to do, I'm not going to flip you or nothing, man, I promise. I just, no, he's probably afraid that I'm going to hit him. No, you're not going to hit him either. I don't want you to let me push your arm down. Okay, that's what I want you to do. Try to push his arm down, Jocelyn. Because Levi's a big, strong man, right? Levi's a big, strong man. Jocelyn can't put it now. Do the same thing. Stick your arm out. Now push his arm down. Push it. I am. <laughs> not two hands, just this one hand. Watch. There you go. It down? No, you're yeah, oh. good. You're good. If I had somebody that would actually try it for me, it would have worked, I promise. <laughs> but she, what, what it is, is you, put, you place something on somebody's head, and as you place that item upon their head, the only thing that their brain begins to think about, even though they know that you're getting ready to push their arm about, the only thing their brain begins to think about is that item on their head. And it allows that person to push the arm down because the mind is a very powerful thing. The mind is, the mind is so powerful. That's why the Word of God says this, that, that we have got to hold every thought captive unto Him because this is what I know. And some of you may have heard me say this before. We have got to be real careful about what we allow into our eye gate yeah. and our ear gate because what we allow into our eye gate and into our ear gate determines what we think. We've got to be real careful about what we think because what we think begins to produce words. We've got to be real careful about what we say because what we say determines our destiny. See, the reason the mind is so powerful is because the word says this, that my tongue is like a two-edged sword and that my words have the power of life and death within them. The things that I speak, I can speak something into existence whether it's going to be for the positive or whether it's going to be for the negative. I can wake up on a daily basis and I can be tired and I can be droggy and I can just not feel it and I can say, well, I just don't feel it today. 
I just don't feel good. I, don't, I, I just want to stand. I just know that today is going to be a bad day. I know that today is going to be a long day, and I just don't want to go out. You know what I'm going to have? I'm going to have a bad day. I'm going to have a long day. It's going to be a terrible day. You know why? Because I believe it. Because as a man believeth in his heart, so is he. But if I wake up and I feel groggy and I feel tired and I say, you know what, I'm not going to do this. I'm going to hit my knees for five minutes and I'm going to get alone with God and I'm going to begin to, to ask him to bless my day. I'm going to begin to believe for him to bring me out of this funk that I am in. Because listen to me, some of y'all are going to have to do that. Some of y'all are going to have to do it. Because we've just went through, a, Pastor Chip was talking about it, we just went through a nasty winter, a cold winter. All of us have been cooped up inside like a caged animal. I was told this morning, I'm glad, uh, Abby said, I'm glad I'm not running the camera with you preaching. Because you, you, you're, you're squirrely. You run, yeah, I'm squirrely. I've been cooped up all winter. I'm ready to run around a little bit, you know. I know I'm always like that. And I apologize, Jonathan, for running around all the time. But that's just me. It's just who I am. But this cabin fever sets in on people while we sit down through the winter. I mean, some of it's, some of it's spiritual, some of it's natural. I mean, there's, there's natural occurrences that happen when you don't get enough sunlight, you don't get enough vitamin uh, 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 D, is that right? Or, yeah, you don't get enough vitamin D. So, I mean, there's some natural things that happen through the wintertime that, 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 that cause us to do this. But also, just the fact that you may have been locked up all this time. I mean, that, that's just depressing. You know, I mean, I, I'm going to go out. I'm an outside kind of guy. Most people are. I don't know a whole lot of people just say, I just love sitting at home all the time, watching Netflix, getting on the internet. There's some of them that do. I realize that. There's some of them that do. <laughs> yeah, probably more than I know. This, but the reason I don't know them is because they don't like me because I want to go outside and play. Right. You know? <laughs> but that leads me into this, that there is a generation right now what are they calling them, the, uh, the uh, help me out, millennials, millennials, me, uh, uh, I think probably me and, and my generation, we, we kind of fall into two different places when it comes to these names that they throw on generations, but this is what I know, uh, a prophet, Tim Himes, says they got like a, a raccoon spirit, you know, they see something shiny, and they're oh, yeah. oh, they, they go that, and when there's something shiny, well, they run to that next thing, he says, we have got to be able to capture their attention, which I get that, I get that, that's why when, uh, when I hear my boss at work talk about how his, uh, six, uh, his, his little girl and her six friends are sitting on the couch and they're all going, and they're texting each other. I mean, I, I don't get it. I don't, I, really, I don't. I don't get it, but it falls right back into the same place where I can't say that is wrong. That is wrong. Because whether I like it or not, and whether you like it or not, the fact of the matter is, is this is a generation that's being raised that way. They're being raised in this technological era. And for us to think that we're going to change that, ain't going to happen. We have to adapt and survive, Joe. Somehow, some way, we have to adapt and survive. We do. And, and not only that, but we have to encourage we have to encourage them because there is something within this generation, listen to me, that is going to be different than what we have ever seen before. And it's going to be new, and to me it's going to be weird, and it's going to be strange, and, and, and I'm probably not going to like it. And some of y'all are probably not going to like it, but I promise you this, it's going to be a brand new revelation that each and every one of us is going to need. They have something within them that Rex needs, I promise you. They have something within them that is going to carry the Word of God to a new place that it has never been before. That's why the Word says this, that I have to add a little bit of Bob's old stuff to a little bit of my newer stuff. And as we add that together, it makes a perfect blend of the Word of God. It makes a perfect atonement between me and God, or me and Bob. I just called you God, man. <laughs> <laughs> but there has to be a blending guys there has to be a mixture Amen. and we can never and I know that's a blanket statement and I usually don't like to use those but I will in this case that we can never look at a, the next generation and say that is not of God I watched a young man just a few weeks back at a, uh, that winter jam this young man's probably 14, 15, and I loved it. I, I, was, I loved it. 
He's probably 14, 15 years old. I even took a video of him on my phone. And uh, one, of the, one of the rock group comes out. Skillet comes out and begins to play. I've been listening to, to, to Skillet for 16 years. You know, they've been around for a while. They, and, and, of course, I know a lot of you are like, Christian rock and roll. Well, stop it. <laughs> it's what we're talking about this morning, right? It's what we're talking about this morning. They've been around for a long time. These men are established in him. They have turned down several, several, over and over, repeatedly, over and over, several people that wanted to give them a contract to go into secular music. He says this, that they'd say, why, why won't you sign with us? If you sign with us, you'll make this much more money. You'll, you'll go to so many different places. He said, because I know who I am and I know what I am called to do. But anyway, they come out and they begin to play. And this young man, I mean, it was, I mean literally, he's like, smacks his face, he's like, Aah! and just goes, I mean, absolutely crazy, does he not, babe? I mean, and one of his favorite songs comes out, and he's, he's, got, he's got a handful of hair on each side, and he's like, oh my gosh, you know, he's, he's just loving it. I mean, you could, it was like, it's almost like he got to meet him. I mean, it was, it was, it was crazy. It was, he was, he was loving it. Was he not seeing it? I mean, this kid, and he's coming out, he's playing the air guitar. <laughs> He, he's head banging. He is going crazy, absolutely berserk the entire time. I mean, he did not care what people behind him were thinking. He did not care what the people beside him were thinking. He was not looking anywhere. And I said, Lord, God, give me that type of freedom. Let me dance like nobody's watching. Let me love like I'm never going to be hurt again. Let me be able to dance the way, that, uh, I don't want to dance the way that kid's dancing, but I want to be able to do what he's doing. And we had a, of course, uh, we had the girls back there, and they're uh, getting all, because uh, I mean, this kid's slinging sweat on him and everything, you know, and he's going absolutely crazy. But he was absolutely dancing in the spirit, the only way that he knew how. And as, as I'm watching all this, of course, I'm, I'm taking it all in. We got the girls behind them. Of course, they're getting aggravated because they're getting sweat droplets thrown on them. We got me and Cena and a couple of us over here that we're all taking videos and pictures of him. You know, well, I'm loving it because it just reminded me uh, 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 25 years ago what the, you know, we ain't going to talk about that. But anyway, I was, I was loving it. I was lo absolutely loving it. And then I looked down and there was an, uh, a middle-aged gentleman, probably, thank God, because that kid would have killed him if he got close to him, about four chairs down from him and he's just sitting there staring at him like almost like you make me sick I mean what in the world are you doing you know he just had this disgusted look on his face and I thought man this kid is loving not only the music but he's doing what sometimes I can't even do myself he's walking in a liberty and a freedom and his measure of grace that God has given him to the extent that he does not care what is going I mean, we're talking about, I keep calling it Conseco. Well, no, it's not Conseco anymore. It's Banker's Life Field House. Thousands upon thousands upon thousands of people. And this kid is dancing like nobody's watching. And I thought, Lord, hell, having, having fun. And, I mean, I, I mean how, do, how do we keep our joy? How, how do we walk in happiness, quote, unquote? Man, we, it's peace and joy by what? The Holy Ghost. Kid was dancing in the spirit, having peace and having joy, having fun by the Holy Ghost. And I said, Lord, if you could somehow, some way... <laughs> If you could somehow, some way, get me there. If you could allow me to take one step in that same direction that that young man is walking right now, because for some reason within my mind, you know, when I thought, well, that was me 25 years ago at the at, at Ozfest acting a fool, you know, but somehow in my mind, I think that I should outgrow all that stuff. Somehow in my mind, I think that that as I get older, that because I am becoming more mature in him, that I should act more mature to you. And then 
Greg Jones comes and just messes my whole system up by saying something like this. You know how to tell true maturity in a Christian? Is they act more like a kid. More childlike. Because the kingdom is like an unto. The kingdom is like an unto these child, these children. Don't you dare try to chase that kid away from me. You're going to learn something right now as he pulls the little one up on his lap. The kingdom is like an unto. Now, am I telling you to go out and act immature? No. I'm not telling you to go out and act a fool. I'm not giving you permission to go out and be silly. I'm not giving you permission to go out because the word also says this, that we avoid the appearance of evil, right? I mean, these, I mean there's a balance in everything, okay? I'm not telling you to get in one ditch that, that you may be in right now and hurry up and, and, and right straight into the other one. What I'm telling you is rightly divide the word of truth and be able to mix a little bit of the old with this new that is coming along and you find out what happens with this new generation, especially if you can take some of these guys underneath your wing and raise them up because, I mean, that's what we're here for, right? Go ye into all the world making... We're going to replicate, listen to me, I used to think that making a disciple was, was replicating myself and somebody else. Not the case. Not the case. I'm going to replicate my experience in you. I want to replicate my experience in you. Big difference. I'm going to tell you about the things that I've walked in. I'm going to tell you about my faults and I'm going to tell you about my failures. I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you how I got to where I am, but I am not going to try to recreate myself in Ryan because he'll be terrible at it. He's, he, he's the best Ryan Flynn that I know, but I promise you, you're going to make a terrible Brock. I'm way too good looking. <laughs> hey, I'm preaching. I can say what I want. <laughs> but listen. This new generation that's coming up, these millennials, yes, they're crazy. Just like every other generation that was from 13 to, to 18 years old, we have all been <laughs> gone at one point, okay? But I promise you this, if you will lock arms with some of these children, if you'll lock arms with them and begin to give them a path, we talked about Christ being the way maker. He abides in me, so you know what that means? I am a way maker, I'm going to be able to show them a path that is true, a path that is straight, and a path that will allow them to become enlightened. And as they become enlightened and as they grow in this thing called anointing that God has placed upon them, because each and every one of us have a measure, each and every one of us have a grace, each and every one of us have a gift, every one of us has these things. So what makes us think that these crazy kids are going to be any different? They've got it. The only thing different between them and us is they don't know how to walk in it yet. And they're going to have to have somebody to show them. They're going to have to have somebody that is brave enough and willing enough and just a little bit crazy maybe to walk beside them and say, hey, this, uh, the, I love this headbanging thing you're doing, you know, but you about killed your mom a while ago. Okay, you, you, you punched your mom in the face when you were dancing. You know, calm, her, calm it down a little bit. You know, there's got to be, some, as I said, there's got to be some balance in all these things. So this is what I'm, this is what I'm challenging you with this morning. For one, don't you dare look at something and say that's not of God. Unless it's absolutely, I mean, don't get me wrong, there's some black and whites, obviously. There's some things that, that is not of God. But I'm talking about the fads, I'm talking about the haircuts, I'm talking about the tattoos and earrings and all these different things that we think that for some reason is a, 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 a not of God. We've got to have an open mind and we've got to have an open heart because I promise you this, if you don't, there's going to be a generation that we lose. And I'm not talking about the whole generation. I'm talking about an individual. If we lose, if we lose one individual, I call that a loss. Amen. If God brings somebody into my, into, my realm or into my sphere of influence and I won't allow them into my sphere of influence because of the way that they look or the way that they act or the, or, or, or the way that they are, it's a failure in my life. Not only have I failed myself, but Jesus said this, I've not lost one, Lord, except the son of perdition. I've not lost one that you sent to me. 
Did you read the stories about those crazy kids that he was running around with? How crazy they got sometimes. I mean, I mean, who, who's going to be the greatest? Who's going to sit at your right hand? I mean, that's me, right? I'm, I'm having their mom come and, and barge into this party. I mean, we really want to know who's going to be the best here, Jesus. We want to know who's the greatest. Peter was the guy that pulled the sword out and chopped people's ears off. I mean, he, he, he was bold and he was tenacious and he was strong. He was, he was crazy. But we always think about these guys as being some 30, 40 years. That's not the case. They were teenagers. They were young men. They were from, you know, uh, 13 to, to 20, 21 years old. These guys were, they, they, they were the millennials of that generation. They were young men. And Jesus went out and collected these young guys, knowing that they were going to be the very key to carry the gospel to the next generation. That they were going to be the very thing that was going to be able to carry the, the word of God and the upcoming Messiah, the news of the Messiah, the Savior of the world. They were going to be the generation that was going to be able to do that. So what's our millennials going to do? What are they going to carry? What's the revelation that they're going to spread across the, word, across the world? So I say this, church, keep an open mind. Keep an open heart. Find out where, because I know each and every one of you have a vision that God has cast in your life, and I want you to find out where they fit within that vision. And say, oh, I see it, Lord. It's right here. I see it. And be an imparter of the revelation and the things that God has given to you and be an imparter into this next generation of, of people to carry the message of God into the world. Amen? Let's bow our heads. So, Father, I praise you this morning. And I thank you so much. Lord, that I truly believe that this is a group of people who are open-minded and open-hearted, Father God that we are a group of people that we want to see your will be complete in our lives. And this is what I know with that, Father God, that it is your will for us to make disciples. It is your will for us to preach the gospel, not only within the four walls of the church, but going out into the streets, going out into the world, Father God. Because if I sit here and I wait within these four walls, for these people to show up, I promise you it's not gonna happen. Yeah, there's gonna be people that's gonna come in, but there's a whole bunch more out there they're probably not going to. So Lord, I say this, Lord, bring them across our path. Let, let, let us be at TGI Friday and see all these crazy college kids over at Terre Haute. Let us, let us be in Evansville and see all these crazy college kids and drop a word of exhortation or a word of knowledge, a word of wisdom Within our, within our hearts, Father God, to speak to them. Lord, let us be spiritually minded when we're not in a spiritual place, quote, unquote, Lord. Let us be a people who are constantly thinking about you, thinking about what we could be doing for you, thinking about what you might be speaking to somebody who's walking down the road, speaking to somebody who's waiting at the stop sign to cross the road, Father. Let us have that mindset instead of just going in and doing what we always do and getting what we always get and getting out. Let us be spiritually minded, Lord. Let our minds be renewed, Father God. Lord, if the case may be, Lord, let us unlearn some things that maybe we have picked up along the way. Let some of these new mindsets be broken off. Sometimes I'm like the Apostle Paul, Lord, I believe. Help me with my unbelief. Bring me to a place, Father God, just as that young man was, that I can walk in a liberty and a peace and a joy. <laughs> but I don't care what everybody else thinks about it. So Lord, right now in Jesus' name, I bind the fear of man. Right now in Jesus' name, I break that off my brothers and sisters. Father, I praise you, Lord, and I thank you for the liberty that they're going to walk in. I thank you, Lord, that we have several people within the house, Lord. That, you know, the old saying, Father, is you can't teach an old dog new tricks, Father, but we're going to be a people who are always going to be learning. We're going to be a people who are always going to be growing. We're going to be a people who are always going to be moving, ebbing and flowing with the Word of God. 
and with the next generation and with the next generation and with the next move of God and with the next move of God. We're going to find out what you are doing. We're going to put ourselves right in the middle of it and say, what do you want me to do, Lord? So, Father, I praise you for this. I thank you for this, Lord God. And if you're in here today, first and foremost, and you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, every head bowed, every eye closed, I don't want nobody looking around. If you don't know Jesus this morning and you say, I want that, I want that type of liberty, I want that type of freedom, I want that type of grace, I want you to slip your hand up. For the rest of us in here, if you have had trouble struggling with the new things, or if you have had mindsets before that you, that you say this is the way that it is and this is the way that it's going to be and it's never going to change, I want you to slip your hand up. Amen. Father, for those who have had their hands up, Father God, I thank you, Lord. Just because of the word that you've given them this morning, Lord, that that is broken off right now in Jesus' name. Father, as they open the word, I believe this. As they open the word and they begin to read it, you're going to begin to speak to them in a brand new way. You're going to begin to show them brand new things, Father God. You're going to begin to uh, allow them to hear speakers and whom they have never agreed with before in their life. And you're going to say, you know what? He may not be right about this and this, but I hear a little bit of truth right there. I see that this man has a little bit of something to offer. So, Lord, I praise you for that. And I thank you for that. No, before we, before we, uh, before we get out of here, if there was somebody in here this morning when you when you uh, walked into the to church. So I'm gonna give you a, a chance here because I believe that uh, this is something that the Lord's laid up in my, in my heart. If you walked into the church this morning, saying I need a prophetic word. I need, I, I, I need somebody to speak into my life because of this decision that I've been trying to make. If that's you, lift your hand. Amen, several of them. Praise God. So this is what the Lord told me. This may be for all of you or this may be for one. I, I, I'm going to give the word and then what I want you to do, everybody that raised their hand, I want you to come up here and you all get, will get a word. Amen. I'll have a... Uh, um, Brother Levi, if you'll come up here with me afterward. That way I, I've got somebody to judge the words, amen, to make sure that they are in, in line with God. But this is what the Lord told me. The person who has been trying to make this decision, you have went over it over and over and over again in your mind. And you walked in this morning saying, Lord, if you just give me a prophetic word, just to give me the answer to this decision. The Lord says this, that you have been leaning one way on this decision. You thought that this might be the right answer. And the Lord says, I am confirming that in you this morning. I'm confirming that in you this morning. Don't let the enemy come in and whisper and steal that away from you. You hear me. You know my voice. And that was the word of the Lord for you. So, Lord, I thank you. And I praise you. And I give you glory for speaking to whoever that may have been for. And Lord, we pray and we ask all these things in Jesus' name.